In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Dear friends, I welcome you to our celebration of our Mass this morning. It's the Friday of the 10th week in Ordinary Time. And uh, I'm offering the Mass for the repose of the soul of Mary uh, Gallia, who died this past week friend of uh, Mary and Stuart Jones up in Leicestershire, my cousin. We pray for the eternal repose of her soul and God's comfort for her family. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you came to reconcile us to the Father and to one another. Lord, have mercy. You heal the wounds of sin and division. Christ, have mercy. You intercede for us with the Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, from whom all good things come, grant that we who call on you in our need may at your prompting discern what is right and by your guidance do it. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the first book of the Kings. When Elijah reached Horeb, the mountain of God, he went into the cave and spent the night in it. Then he was told, go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord. Then the Lord himself went by. There came a mighty wind so strong that it tore the mountains and shattered the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind came an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake came fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, there came the sound of a gentle breeze. And when Elijah heard this, he covered his face with the cloak and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. Then a voice came to him, which said, what are you doing here, Elijah? He replied, I am filled with the jealous zeal for the Lord of hosts, because the sons of Israel have deserted you, broken down your altars and put your prophets to the sword. I am the only one left and they want to kill me. Go, the Lord said, go back to the same way to the wilderness of Damascus. You are to go and anoint Hazael and king of Aram, you are to anoint Jehu, son of Nimshi, as king of Israel, and to anoint Elisha, son of Saphat, and Abel, Mehola, as prophet to succeed you. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response to the psalm, it is your face, O Lord, that I seek. It is your face, O Lord, that I seek. O Lord, hear my voice when I call. Have mercy and answer. Of you my heart has spoken, seek his face. It is your face, O Lord, that I seek. It is your face, O Lord, that I seek. Hide not your face. Dismiss not your servant in anger. You have been my help. It is your face, O Lord, that I seek. I am sure I shall see the Lord's goodness in the land of the living. Hope in him, hold firm and take heart. Hope in the Lord. It is your face, O Lord, that I seek. Please stand to acclaim the gospel. Alleluia, alleluia. The sheep that belong to me listen to my voice, says the Lord. I know them and they follow me. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, 
You have learned how it was said, you must not commit adultery. But I say this to you, if a man looks at a woman lustfully, he has already committed adultery with her in his heart. If your right eye should cause you to sin, tear it out and throw it away. For it will do you less harm to lose one part of you than to have your whole body thrown into hell. And if your right hand should cause you to sin, cut it off and throw it away. For it will do you less harm to lose one part of you than to have your whole body go to hell. It has also been said, anyone who divorces his wife must give her a writ of dismissal. But I say this to you, everyone who divorces his wife except for the case of fornication makes her an adulteress. And anyone who marries a divorced woman commits adultery. The Gospel of the Lord. rather lovely uh, first reading from uh, the first book of the Kings, dealing with the prophet Elijah, Elijah um, concerned about the infidelity of Israel to the covenant with God. And so he tries to discern what God wants. And as we heard in the reading, God spoke, uh, God spoke in the silence and then he was given the job to go on and tell who was going to be a king and who was going to be a a prophet and so on Um, I think the lesson is if we want to hear what God wants from us we have to listen very carefully spend time with him discern the gospel is certainly more challenging and I would need a lot more time to speak about it in order to do it proper justice but Matthew is telling us that if we are to be a follower of Christ we must seek perfection seek that higher calling it's very interesting the debate at the moment about statues um Of course, we come from a tradition where we've got lots of them. Uh, I'm in the hopes that the statues are all to uh, people who uh, lived good lives. The fact of the matter is, you put a statue up to nobody who's human without them having feet of clay. And there's nobody in society that I know of that might deserve a statue that is absolutely perfect in every possible way. I think a statue in some ways reflects an appreciation of some element of goodness in the person, some thread of goodness, and the rest is human nature. But we look to our own statues, the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Sacred Heart of Jesus, St. Teresa, St. Anthony of Padua. Every time the church creates a saint, uh, an image, a statue of the new saint is placed on the exterior, usually on the back walls now, of St. Peter's in Rome. And uh, uh, I think that's what we want. We want to see the saints uh, venerated, uh, but to appreciate that they can only find perfection in Christ, doing what Matthew is trying to tell us to do, to seek perfection. May not always achieve it, but to seek it. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, 
for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Brothers and sisters, pray that our sacrifice will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name for our good and Look kindly upon our service, O Lord, we pray, that what we offer may be an acceptable oblation to you and lead us to grow in charity through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Be Lift up your hearts. Up Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Right. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy. Through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word, through whom you made all things, whom you sent as Saviour and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin. Fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory, as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. The blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the people, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, when we eat this bread and drink this cup. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Vincent Jared, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servant Mary, whom you've called from this world to yourself. Grant that she, who was united with your Son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who please you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. 
through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. Lord, teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. But deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. We offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
the prayer of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. May your healing work, O Lord, free us, we pray, from doing evil and lead us to what is right through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Be May Almighty God bless you all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Let us go forth in peace. Thank you, God. And evening prayer is at six o'clock this evening. Thank you.